We welcome all of you once again to Beautiful Savior for this video worship service as we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Easter. And once again, as your pastor, it is my prayer that the Lord will permit that very soon we will be able to gather together and see one another face to face. Until then, the peace of the Lord be with you always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Lord, we like so many others, 
who have called ourselves your people for centuries, have a way of taking your salvation for granted. We use the good news of Jesus to make ourselves appear to be better than others with whom we disagree. Teach us, dear Lord, that you would have all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Forgive our sins and cleanse us of unrighteousness. Teach us instead to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ has, was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And to those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The first reading for this fifth Sunday of Easter is both from the book of Acts, chapter 6 and chapter 7. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Greek-speaking Jews among them complained against the Hebrew-speaking Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the providences of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. Stephen replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. You stiff-necked people, your hearts and ears are still uncircumcised. You are just like your ancestors. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Was there ever a prophet your ancestors did not persecute? They even killed those who predicted the coming of the righteous one. And now you have betrayed and murdered him. You who have received the law that was given through angels, but have not obeyed it. When the members of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears, and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city, and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from St. Peter's first letter, the second chapter. Like newborn babies, I encourage you to crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, 
rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. And a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. And the gospel for this morning is from John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you for such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. They 
trust their God and serve Him still, and do in all His holy will. Oh, bless the parents who give heed unto their children's foremost need. They trust their God and serve Him still. May none to them and heaven be lost. Oh, bless that house, it prospers well. In peace and joy the parents dwell. And in their children's lives is shown how richly God can bless his own. Here will I and mine today a solemn promise make and stay. Though all the world forsake his word, I meant my house will serve the Grace be to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God upon we, which we base our message on this Mother's Day is from Ephesians chapter 6. Honor your father and mother that everything may go well for you and you may have a long life on the earth. This is an important commandment with a promise. In the name of our dear Lord Jesus Christ, who even in his dying breath saw to it that his mother would be cared for. Dear friends, Mom, I'm home. Years ago, I spoke those very words oh, about 4, 4.30 in the afternoon after walking eight blocks home from grade school. As the back door closed behind me, one of the first things that was on my mind was, where is mom? Sometimes she would say, I'm in here. There were really only a, a finite number of places that mom could be. And I know she wasn't uh, gone some long distance away because we only had one car back then. My dad had to use it to go to work, so Mom had no car during the day. Um, the farthest that perhaps she could go would be to the grocery store. I was one of those very blessed ones back in the 1950s to have a stay-at-home mom. In fact, uh, just about the whole block had stay-at-home moms back then. Where is mom? I wonder where mom is. Well, maybe she was in the bedroom putting clean sheets on the bed. Or maybe she was in the basement doing the laundry and drying it with one of those um, old uh, ringer dryers. Remember those? Or remember, she might have been in the pantry getting out some food for supper or some pots and pans. She might have been in the bathroom cleaning up our messes. Maybe she was in the dining room because there was always a sewing machine on the dining room table. Or maybe she was in the kitchen uh, getting ready to prepare supper. Very rarely would I ever find her in the living room because uh, that might have uh, been a time where she wasn't feeling very well and had to lie down. And if she wasn't in any one of those spots, then there were only two other possibilities. She might be next door having coffee with a neighbor or a short walk to the grocery store. My mom is now 95 years old, and she's active, and she's mentally alert. But on this Mother's Day, because she is in an adult housing complex, 
She's in a lockdown. And so I can't see her, and I can't hug her, and I can't help her. And so I'm kind of sad on this Mother's Day. Where's Mom? In order to uh, honor Mother on this Mother's Day, we have to ask the question, where's Mom? To answer that question, what I'd like to do is I'd like to try to play the part of every mother's child. Where's mom? If you were to ask that perhaps of a little child, the little child might say, well, my mommy's in the hospital because she's going there to have a baby and to bring home our new sister. Honor those moms today who are in the labor or delivery room. I will increase your pain and your labor when you give birth to children, God said in the Garden of Eden. Pray for the pregnant mothers that God keeps them safe for those nine months of gestation. Thank God for the miracle of birth. Pray God that during the labor and delivery that he keeps both mother and child safe. Honor mom with a prayer for all those ladies today in the labor and delivery room. Where is mom? Well, for perhaps some of you children, mom is right there with you today. It would be nice if she could be sitting next to you here in church. That's not possible. But uh, your mom might be right there with you today. Honor mom. Listen to her, obey her, clean up your room, behave, give her a hug. And if you happen to be old enough that your mom is teaching you how to drive, then be careful. Say, Mom, I love you. Pray for her. Where is Mom? Well, my mom's not always home because she has to have a job outside the home. But she's always there to help me with my homework. She comes to my school games and activities even when she's all tired out. Honor her. Pray for her. That God keep her healthy and happy and thank God for her. Where's mom? She's not here. She used to be, but there was a lot of fighting in our family. And she went away, and so I grew up mostly without her. Honor her. Pray for her that God helps her to remain a believer in Jesus. And maybe one day you'll see her in heaven. Where's mom? I don't know. I never knew her. Someone told me that uh, she was drunk all the time, so Grandma took care of me. I don't know if I can ever forgive her. I try to forgive her. Can God forgive me for my difficulty in forgiving her? How hard it was for God to forgive you living in a world so corrupt because of your sins. The worldly turmoil in which we live because of our sins. And for all of it, God the Father put his Son on the cross. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not charging their sins against them. Forgive as God has forgiven you. Where is mom? I never knew her at all because, you see, I'm adopted. I have two moms, a mom who adopted me, and I love her so much I can hardly believe that she's not my real mom. I thank God for her every day. My biological mother, well, I love her too. She brought me into the world. She didn't abort me. She gave me away because she wasn't able to take care of me. And that must have been hard. 
not as hard as it was for God the Father to give his son away. I thank God for her. I pray that God keeps her safe. Where's mom? She's far away today. She lives in Arizona. They retired there. I don't get to see her too often. Uh, we contact each other by the phone, by Zoom, by email, by text. But I worry about her. I don't want her to fall. I hope she has good doctors down there. I pray that God keeps her safe. Where is mom? Well, mom can't live by herself anymore, so she moved in with me. And I don't have the privacy and the independence like I used to. Honor her by praying for patience. As much patience as she had years ago when she changed all your diapers and fed you and caught you when you took your first step when you were a helpless child. Where is mom? Well, she can't take care of herself anymore, so we had to sell her house and make arrangements for a care center. I can't visit her as often as I want to, and so I feel guilty like I'm neglecting her. Can you feel guilty for feeling guilty? Honor your mom by forgiving yourself. God has already forgiven you. When you can't be there, then pray for the nurse's aides. Where's mom? She has dementia, Alzheimer's disease. I visit her a lot, but she always seems to be so distracted and far away. I don't know if she really knows me anymore. I cry a lot. I thank God for her baptismal grace that keeps her in faith. Honor Ma by praying for her. Where's Mom? She went home to be with the Lord years ago. Honor her by remembering her. Thank God for all the memories that she gave to you. Thank God for her faith and for the faith that she shared with you. And thank God that you will see her again. Where's mom? You know, the answer to that question is different for each one of us. Today is a day to honor mom. Remember her, pray for her, forgive her, thank God for her. And perhaps you're saying today that uh, maybe this isn't uh, what you wanted to hear on Mother's Day. But then again, God's Word has a whole lot of us things for us to hear, some things we like, some things we don't. But you know, when it comes right down to it, there's only a little while left before you will say once again, Mom, I'm home. We're both home. For good. And all the rest of the family is here too. Let's go over there and worship for a little while before the throne and in front of the Lamb. And God granted for Jesus' sake. Amen. We confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
God in his divine wisdom called the soul of our former member, Ruth Lemke, home to himself in heaven. We remember Ruth as being the uh, wife of one of our former pastors, Erwin Lemke, we pray. O oh Lord God, Lord of life and death, we thank you for all the mercies with which you blessed our fellow believer, Ruth, now fallen asleep. We thank you especially for having brought her to the knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would comfort her family and all who mourn her death with your precious promises and cheer them with the sure hope of a blessed reunion in heaven. Grant the lifeless body rest, and at last, together with us all, a joyful resurrection to life everlasting. And teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain hearts of wisdom and finally be saved through Jesus Christ, our risen and ever-living Lord. Amen. We also pray, Heavenly Father, you are the source of life, wisdom, and all good things. Look with favor on all mothers who have given life to their children and who nurture them with loving concern and faithful instruction. May their children honor them and call them blessed. When they become weary, sustain them with physical and spiritual rest. Hear us for the sake of your son, Jesus, who cared for his earthly mother and in whom you are well pleased. Amen. We also pray, Heavenly Father, we cannot fathom the depth of, of, of meaning that this crisis, this plague has for us now. We confess that as a people we have deserved to be visited with a heavy hand. We have worshipped too many gods. We have failed to honor your name. We have turned deaf ears to your word. We have not upheld order and equity among men. We have been unchaste and impure. Yet we pray you to hear our prayer for the sake of your Son, our Lord. Have compassion and mercy. Set aside our guilt and give us new life through the merits of your Son. Bring relief to all who suffer this day. Ease the anxieties of those who are distressed. Send help to those who are distraught. Release us from this fiery trial, that we may be free to give you thanks and glory for deliverance from the day of trouble. Amen. Let us pray for, let us pray for us to see your calling, dear Lord, every day in our own lives as your spirit enables us to proclaim the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray to rejoice with those who rejoice today that their joy and ours may be full. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are caregivers that they may see in their time shared with others your calling to sustain us as we live for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick and suffering to receive your promise of powerful and effective healing as well as your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who mourn that they may see and know that love never ends because you love us without end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessings and honor and power and glory be to our God forever and ever. Amen. We join together in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.
accord our parting hymn of praise. Once more we bless thee ere our worship cease. Then, lowly bending, wait thy word of peace. Grant us thy peace upon us. thy peace, Lord, through the coming night. Turn thou for us its darkness into light. From harm and danger keep thy children free. For dark and Thy peace throughout our